All right. So we've been talking for several weeks, uh, three, I guess, three, and this will make four, maybe four, and this will make five. I don't know. really wasn't counting. But uh, about having a strong spirit. I'm going to recap really quickly um, because I see quite a number of faces that haven't been here for the last several weeks. But I'm telling you, this is going to be a rock skimming on the the surface. um, And then we'll get into the closing of it tonight. So go back and and listen to things in, in fullness. But a strong spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So this idea of being steadfast and immovable and always abounding, it will require having a strong spirit. The weak don't always abound. The weak are movable, not immovable. The weak give up. They're not steadfast. So we are expected to be strong. In the same uh, book, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Be brave, be strong. In the King James it says, quit ye like men. That means be brave, be strong, be courageous. God said to Joshua, only be bold and courageous. So we are expected to be strong. We said this, a strong spirit will enable you to love the unlovable, to be joyful in hard times, to have peace in the midst of chaos, To be kind to rude people. (laughs) Kindness is one of the fruit of the Spirit. All of those that I reference, all of the positives, are fruits of the Spirit. So when you're strong in Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit will operate in you. Remember I reminded you of what the Lord said said to us at the beginning of the year. This will be a year of growth, maturity, maturity, and great reward. And we emphasize that it is the mature that bear fruit. The little sapling tree has no fruit on it. The mature, healthy tree bears fruit. We are expected to bear fruit. We're actually expected to bear much fruit. So we should be strong, mature, healthy. Not just in body, but especially in spirit. So uh, the strong spirit will enable you to do those things that I said. It will also enable us to resist the devil and temptation and thereby avoid foolish mistakes. A strong spirit will enable us to resist depression and emotional and mental fatigue. We're going to talk about some emotional things today. Resist depression and emotional and mental fatigue, and it, it, will, enable you to hold, it will enable you to hold you or hold yourself in peace. You say, well, won't the Lord hold me in peace? He's been trying. So there's a responsibility and a part that that we have to play. It's interesting, oftentimes, you'll you'll find somebody going through a a difficulty and they begin to develop strength in an area that they know will help solve their problem, but they wait until they have a problem. What's better than that? Develop strength before you have the problem. Preventative maintenance. It's cheaper, takes less effort. And what effort is expended is spread out over time. Don't wait till you're in the hospital and been given two weeks to live to start believing God's word. Can you say amen? Amen. Having a strong spirit will enable you to overcome and resist sickness. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his affirmity. It will sustain, if you look at another translation, it will sustain him in sickness in the New King James. It will sustain him in sickness. So having a strong spirit is good. Say, it's good. <laughs> George Pearson's. We read this several times. I'll read it again. It's, it's, it's good. So we'll read it again here. A strong spirit will cause us to overcome physical attacks. Financial problems, relational difficulties, job, career, and ministerial setbacks, emotional challenges, everything the devil throws our way. We can build a barrier, a force field, a wall of protection around us, so when the storms of life hit, we stand like a rock, unshaken and unmovable. Our spirits can become so rooted, grounded, and established in the Word that we can actually repel disease, stop care. Resist sin, override doubt, dissolve offense, and block pressure. We can build up our spiritual immune system to such a degree that sickness can't penetrate it. Discouragement can't sway it. Fear can't stop it. Bad news can't move it. And adversity cannot affect it. 
And then we went on and talked about how strength comes. Strength comes by discipline. Always. Strength comes by discipline. There's a certain amount of strength that you're just given naturally as a human when you're born. A certain amount of human strength, physical strength. A certain amount. That baby is, is born and there's a certain amount of, of strength just naturally already there. But something has to take place after birth in order for that baby to continue to grow and be, begin, uh, continue to become stronger. See, it's been inside the mother's womb and been, by, by providence of God, God designed it this way, that is receiving life and strength and nourishment from the mother and there's not much the mother can do about it. That baby is receiving life from the mother. Now, the mother can uh, pervert or affect that, that nurturing that's going on, but the baby is receiving from the mother naturally. The mother can't make a decision, I'm not going to feed this baby on the inside of me. She can't do that. She can decide to put bad stuff in her, which will affect the life of the baby you follow in me. No? Are you following me? Okay. Um, but once the baby is born, there's an intention that has to take place. The mother has to intentionally care for the baby. Yeah? The father or someone. The baby cannot take care of itself. It has to be nurtured. Someone else exercise discipline for the baby. The baby cannot feed itself. It doesn't know anything to do but to cry when it's hungry and poop after it eats. That's all a baby knows how to do. Eventually, babies learn words. Eventually, they learn how to roll over. They learn how to crawl. They learn how to, uh, you know, to walk. They learn how to do different things. And in all the cultivation of those things, strength and character is being developed. And so when you were raising your kids, you taught your children uh, not to touch everything in the house. I was talking with some, this side note, I was talking with somebody the other day. Their child has no discipline. And I said, that's because you moved everything off of the tables when they were kids. Well, yeah, I didn't want them to break anything. And therefore, your child never learned what to do and what not to do. It had free reign. It could do anything it wanted. You removed all Barrier and the child never had to develop discipline. You did all the discipline for the child. Instead of disciplining the child, you disciplined yourself to grab things from up here rather than... Are you following me? Okay, so as we grow, we experience different things. And experience produces hope. Experience gives us understanding and knowledge. teaches us in a lot of ways what to do and what not to do. It creates a dependency and a strength at the same time. We find out that there are certain things, as you got even older, you found out there are certain things that you can do well yourself and other things you just better get help for. Yeah. So those talents, abilities, anything that's been placed in you, anything that's been placed in me, uh, they may have been there to some degree from the very, very beginning, but everything must be cultivated. Everything must grow, and it happens by diet and exercise. Spiritually, it happens naturally by diet and exercise. It happens emotionally by diet and exercise. Garbage in, garbage out. You, if you're lazy physically, you're probably lazy emotionally. You're probably lazy spiritually. There's a good chance if you're lazy spiritually, you're lazy physically. They all three affect each other. Am I making you happy this evening? All right. So we talked about four activities related to diet and exercise. Uh, let, me, let me be more clear. Four activities related to spiritual diet and exercise. Do you remember what the four activities were? Read, pray, worship, and obey. Read, pray, worship, obey. They even rhyme to help you out. Read, pray, worship, and obey. And we, we said the more you read, the more you want to read. The more you pray, the more you want to pray. The more you worship, the more you want to worship. The more you obey, the more you want to obey. That's how it works. The, the more you do something that's godly, there's a reward for it. You're like, ooh, I like that. You know, when the, when the little mouse is in the, is in the lab, when the lab rat's in the, in the thing, and he knows I can press that button, and I'm going to get a little shot of endorphin or food or whatever, he learns to press that button. Yeah. So when you find out that reading your Bible produces a, a faith in you, you're like, I like that. 
I'm going to press that button. When you find out that prayer causes you to enter into to, um, uh, relationship with God in such a way that he speaks to you and, and tells you things that are, that are to come and gives you advice and wisdom and counsel, you're like, I like that. I'm going to pray more often. Worship and, and obeying, same types of things. So sometimes it's scary to obey, but once you get out there and you obey, you're like, this turned out really awesome. There's a great reward for it. All right. So we'll, we'll keep, uh, I'm, I'll read you one last thing here. Your spiritual strength will set the parameters of your overall well-being. The degree of victory that you experience in life is directly connected to your spiritual strength. The degree of victory that you will experience in life is directly connected to your spiritual strength. So, after that... Weak character and strong flesh is a disastrous combination. A weak spirit, strong flesh is a disastrous combination. And we went through a variety of things in the, in the Bible. We talked about Samson. We talked about David. We talked about Paul. We talked about Jesus. We, um, and, and then there's one that I didn't give you, and that would be Joseph. Joseph, who is... A Old Testament picture of Jesus, strong in character. He's at the top of his game. He is ruling the kingdom. And and, in essence, it might be like in the United States of America. uh, He's the vice president, and the president's wife comes for him. I want you, Joseph. I think you're hot. Now, I'll, I'll tell it to you this way. The anointing is attractive. When you get close to God, people want to be close to you. Sometimes they misunderstand and they misinterpret stuff. And so that's why you have to have strong character. And you have to have a strong spirit. You have to be able to say, you know what? I'm not getting my next step up that way. I'm not taking that raise or that job opportunity. I'm not getting it that way. Doesn't always have to be sexual, so don't keep it in that that lane. That's what was going on with Joseph. But he knew to resist. Did it cost him everything? No, it didn't. It cost him his seat of authority in the natural. But he won everything as far as God was concerned. That's what you cannot miss. You can't miss it. It didn't cost Joseph a thing. It actually gained him, put him exactly where God needed him to be. Amen. All right. Weak character, strong flesh, disastrous combination. But strong character, strong spirit, disciplined flesh is a wonderful thing. Paul said, I buffet my body daily. I beat it. I put it into subjection. Does he literally take a whip and beat his body? No. He, he disciplines it in the sense of saying, I will be spirit ruled, not mind ruled, and not flesh ruled. So we said, don't exercise your body at the expense of your mind, and don't exercise your mind at the expense of your spirit. Be strong, spirit, soul, and body. All right, and now we get into tonight, to, into tonight which is uh, what we'll finish up with. And I tell you, that was a great recap. That was good. Forget listening to message one, two, three. Just buy the CD for number four. Actually, we don't sell CDs. It's all free. Um, all right, so uh, last, last lesson here in, in this series. My title, if you wanted a title, would be, But I Feel Weak. But I Feel Weak. All right, turn with me, if you would, to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. And while you're going there, I want you to look at the screen, try to do two things at the same time. But I want to read Psalm 18, 1 and 2. Psalm 18, 1 and 2. We'll come back to this verse towards the end, Lord willing. I will love, if you jump down towards the end of, actually on the screen, it's the very last line. We'll forget all the introductions. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Say that line with me, please. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. One more time. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. It's an amazing confession. Coming from a man that's in a disastrous situation. 
And that's what we'll get to a little bit later on. Have you ever had seemingly everything stolen from you? Anybody? You thought, like, seemingly, seemingly. yeah. It's, that's how you felt at the moment. It's okay to have feelings, by the way. It's not okay for feelings to have you. All right, so I know, you know, we're, we're word of faith, and the word of faith in many ways has gone to the extremes. Your arm got cut off and go, I don't feel nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> so, you know, you live in poverty all your life, and all you do is, is all you know how to do is, is say, well, I'm, I'm rich, I'm rich. Yeah, but you're a poor spender, and so your money just, anyway. Uh, all right, you, you with me? Okay, so how many of you have, have felt before that everything was ripped away from There was no hope for you? You know, something bad happened in a relationship, something bad happened at a, at a job or, or whatever, and it was, it was all ripped away. And then what little bit that you had shortly thereafter got burned to the ground. Right. You know. uh, have you ever cried so hard that you didn't have any more strength to cry? Have you ever had the people around you who that are they're supposed to be on your side, they're supposed to be with you, but then all of a sudden they start blaming you for all the problems? It's all of a sudden every problem has become your fault. You're the reason why this is taking place. And they just assume kill you. You ever been there? What would you do? If you haven't been there, what would you do? If you have been there, what did you do? Maybe you responded right. Maybe you responded wrong. Maybe you figured it out a little later on and said, I don't think I'll do that anymore. I'm going to do this differently. i got to get out of this hole. Obviously, you made it through. You're still here. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Look to your neighbor. They're still here. They made it. We've all been through French word crap. By the way, this is probably very inappropriate to do, but there's a new COVID test. It's an anal COVID test. You're aware of that? No. So if you don't want to get a, a swab stuck up your nose or go to the clinic or go to the hospital, take two fingers, stick it up your rear end, take it out. If you can smell it, you don't have COVID. Oh, that's right. Don't forget taste. No, I wasn't going to go that far. You know, they say you lose all sense of smell and taste, so there really is, an, uh, China has really developed an anal test for coronavirus. They really have. I don't think that's it, but that's awfully funny. If you didn't think that was funny, then you're too serious for me. You're entitled not to think it was funny, but... Uh, <laughs> Somebody, you should just end with that. Good night. God bless. Uh, okay. <laughs> what even made me think of that joke? Where, where was I? Oh, crap. Life. life. Life has plenty of crap to dish out to everyone. You can have your fair share.
This is the night you're, hi, you, hello, Uganda. They're probably rolling laughing right now. <laughs> Skip the visit to the doctor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> All right, y'all stop laughing. <laughs> we got to get spiritual again. <laughs> uh, so how do you respond to crappy situations? <laughs> ah, you laugh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> so as we go here, <clears throat> I'll give you some tips so I, I said uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30, correct? Yes, correct? So what if I feel weak? What do I do? What do I do when I feel weak? And then I ask you those questions. So here we go. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag... They attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and they went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. They were, by the way, they were out fighting at another place and when they came back. So David and his men came to the city and there it was, burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. And David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, however you say that, Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. So he had two wives taken captive. Now, David was greatly distressed. I could imagine. For the people spoke of stoning him. So there it is, the question, have you ever had all the people around you blame you for what was going on and want to kill you? The, David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Verse 7. Then David said, pause. I'm gonna, we went right there for that moment for you to realize something. David did not speak any instruction until after he had strengthened himself in the Lord. He lost everything that he's got, and so did everybody else. And he's about to lose his life if something doesn't happen and happen quickly. So did David give answer? No. He strengthened himself, the end of verse 6. He strengthened himself in the Lord, verse 7. And then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring me the ephod. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. That was the priestly garment. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? I won't get into the ephod and the stones and, and how they would do things to inquire of the Lord. But nonetheless, David, before giving any instruction, strengthened himself in the Lord. And then his first instruction was, I must hear from God. Help me do it. Everybody else would have realized when the instruction is going, bring me the ephod, that they would have seen and realized David is inquiring of the Lord, asking the Lord, what do we do about this situation? Have you ever been in an occasion where you went to seek God, but somebody knew of your situation, and they were like, you don't need to seek God, you just need to do... You ever been there? Now, if they have heard from God and have some real biblical instruction for you, that may be just fine. But oftentimes what many people do is act too quickly. So I'll give you a piece of advice. 
When disaster has struck your life, be careful about making decisions. Take your time. You say, well, I got to do something now. Maybe you don't. You have to know when to act now and when to act later. I mean, for instance, if Jerry has got his finger stuck in that outlet over there, I'm like, well, let me seek the Lord as to what I should do. You know. I mean, I, uh, I was, Dad, I was driving your car this, this morning and coming through the intersection right there at the, at the red light. And the, the light turned yellow and I was still going through. And so also did three cars from the turn lane opposite me decide to go. And I, the first car, I, I saw him coming. I was like, he's not a problem. Second car, I'll miss him by a few feet. We'll just keep going. Then the third car started. <laughs> I didn't have to pray about what to do. Hit the brakes, jerk the car over to the left, and then you had to jerk to the right because there's cars in the turn lane. But that car maneuvers like it's beautiful, beautiful. It's a, it's a machine. It's a real machine. Anyway, there are some things you don't have to, you know what to do. You know what to do. But when you come into situations when you don't know what to do, don't give hasty answers. Inquire of the Lord and tell everyone else, I'm going to inquire of the Lord. Well, what do you want us to do about this? We need to know. I don't know what to tell you right now other than I'm going to hear from God. When I hear from God, I'll let you know. They said of Brother Hagen, winter camp meeting would be coming up about six months, eight months down the road. Maybe summer camp meeting coming up about eight months down the road. They got to book the venues. They got to, you know, are we going to have it at Rama Church? Or are we going to have it at the Maybe Center? Are we going to have it here? Are we going to have it? There? What are we going to do? We have to get the sound guys and the advertisements. They need to know what to put in print. And they'd be pushing them for answers. And he wouldn't give any answers until he had heard from God as to when and what and that type of thing. And they'd get all frustrated and frazzled. But then when Brother Hagin would know, he would tell them and they would all run with it. And sure enough, it seemed to always work out just fine. Don't make hasty decisions, especially... When bad, things, when bad things have just happened to you. If you've um, lost a loved one, um, a, a parent, a child, a spouse, um, recently gotten divorced, maybe lost a job or something, you know, strong situations in life. Be careful about making big, major decisions especially. Seek counsel, especially of the Lord. Okay, verse 7. Did we finish verse 7? Yeah, okay. And I thought brought the, the, the ephod. So David, verse 8, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Hallelujah. Verse 9 and 10. So David went, and he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Basor, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Basor. I want to give you some other pieces of advice. I told you I'd give you some tips along the way as we read this story here. Not everyone should fight every battle. And not everyone should fight every battle of yours. There are times where there are people who are with you now, but should not be with you in that battle over there, or this battle over here. David knew of the Lord who to bring into battle and who to leave behind. So the 200 that are left behind, they were left behind because they were too weak to fight in battle. There are friends and family that you have that are too weak to fight in certain battles that you're fighting. Let them stay behind. If you bring them into your fight, you will be spending more time trying to strengthen them instead of dealing with the situation that you have. Not everyone can fight with you about everything. And you should not fight in everyone else's battle either. There are other people's battles that you may not have the strength to handle their battle. I know we like to think, I can help everybody. Maybe not. So know when to tell somebody, you know what, I don't know how to help you in your situation. I will pray for you and I will be waiting for you when you return. 
but maybe you should go to so-and-so and let them help you. Did you hear that? Did you catch that, that tip there? Not everyone should fight every battle with you, and you should not fight everyone else's battle. All right, verse 11. Then they found an Egyptian in the field. So David and 400 men go to pursue. God said they would surely recover all. They find this Egyptian in the field, and they bring him to David. And they gave him bread, and he ate, and they let him drink water. Verses 12 and 13, and then I'll give you a point. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread or drunk any water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? And the man said, I am a young man from Egypt, a servant of the Amalekite, and my master left me behind because three days ago I got sick. We'll read verse 14. We made an invasion of the southern area and of the Cherithites, uh, Cherithites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire, 15. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? Here's the point I want to give you. What most people would have done when they found out that he was one of the enemy that stole my wife and kids and our belongings and burned, ah, you're dead man. But David was strong in spirit. He didn't act out of haste. He didn't act out of anger. He had already sought the Lord and gotten a direction from God. Pursue and you'll recover all. So when he found one of the enemy, he didn't lose his cool. He actually stayed very calm. I believe the hand of the Lord was on David in this situation. And so what does David do? He's going to use the man for access. Most people would just try to annihilate and take revenge on somebody who's done something evil to them. Don't do it. Don't do it. So stay calm, stay steady. We'll keep reading. And uh, for time's sake, I'd, I'd really, really probably, we're going to read fast. When they had brought him down there, they, they spread out over the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. And David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. That's a long time. Not a man of them escaped except 400 young men. I think that's funny how the Bible says that. No one escaped except 400. Yeah. <laughs> 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. 18 and so on. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and herds that they had driven before those other livestock and said, This is David's spoil. And David came to the 200 men who had been so weary that they could not follow David, whom they had also made to stay at the brook Besor. And so they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near the people, he greeted them. And all the wicked, worthless men of those who went with David, did you see what they just got called? Then all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, Now, I'm going to pause and give you a Not everyone that fights with you is as spiritual as you are. There are some people... That God will put along your side. You may not like this, but that are wicked people. He will cause even your enemies to fight for you sometimes rather than against you. He can cause people that are not of your same persuasion politically to agree with you. He can cause people that are not of your same persuasion spiritually or doctrinally to fight along your side. You don't have to agree with everybody about everything. Brass tack simple equation here. I love Christian mechanics, but if they're going to work on my car, I want them to be a good, good mechanic, not a good Christian. I don't care how spiritual they are if they don't know how to fix a car. Now, hopefully they're a good Christian, good mechanic. Okay, we'll keep reading. Because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered except for, for every man his own wife and children, that they may lead them away and depart. And David said, My brethren, you shall not do this with what the Lord has given us. 
Who has preserved us and delivered into our hand the troop that came against us? For who, for who will heed you in this matter? Who will listen to you in this matter? But as his part is, who goes down to battle, so shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They shall share alike. So David is saying, these guys that stayed back with our stuff and you guys who went with the battle, you're all going to get the same reward. Verse 25, so it was from that day forward he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this very day. I want to tell you one last point and then we'll move on into something else. If you don't quit and if you don't get ahead of God, if you don't lose your cool and act out of the flesh, but rather stay strong in spirit and be directed by the Holy Ghost and the hand of the Lord, He can restore everything that has ever been stolen from you. You can go into the battle, recover all, and not have any loss whatsoever. Amen. Then when you come out, if you realize that it was God that preserved you and who gave you the victory in this battle, you'll know who to reward and you'll know how to reward. Amen. Amen. All right, turn with me, please. Well, we'll just go quickly on, this, on the screen for this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. So I told you the title of today was, But I Feel Weak. David felt weak. It's over. So he inquires of the Lord. He strengthened himself, to be more accurate. He strengthened himself in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We can run that down and say, We walk by faith and not by touch or taste or hearing. We walk by faith and not by the senses. Faith comes by hearing the word, right? So we could say we walk by the word and not by the senses or by what we feel. So we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by feelings. We walk by the word and not by feelings. So then you can just finish it out and just simply say, we walk by the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if you feel weak, what do you do? Walk according to the word. Walk according to the word. You don't change what you know is right just because you don't feel strong. That is actually the best time to take hold of what you know is right. Yeah. What you know is stable. We have this in, in the natural. We do it. It's common sense. When you lose balance or if you're older, older people maybe going up steps or whatever, what do you reach out for? Something stable. You reach out for that handrail, you, 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 a pole or a, a, a walker, something that adds to stability. So since you know now while you're in a good frame of mind that the word is strong and stable and, and it does not move, when you get shaken, you grab a hold of the word. When you feel weak, when you're like, I don't know how to walk, I'm feeble, my balance is off, something's not right with me right now, what do you do? You grab a hold of God's word. Amen. 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 Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38, they all say the same thing. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So we walk by faith. We live by faith. By faith in what? In God's word. When you lose your balance, grab a hold of God's word. Now, another thing. Put the right stuff in your mouth. Put strength in your mouth. Joel chapter 3, we'll read 9, 10, and 11. Uh, you know what, I'm going to read it to you off my paper here because I have it printed out in the easy read version. I like the way this says it. Follow along the best you can with whatever you have on the screen. But Announce this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the strong men. Let all the men of war come near. Let them come up. Beat your plows into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Now watch what it says here. Let the weak, in the New King James, let the weak say, I am strong. Let me tell you what the Easy Read translation says. Let the weak man say, I am a strong soldier. Because it's talking about coming to war and calling all the strong soldiers. And what people's minds would go to is say, well, I'm not a strong soldier. I'm not being called to war. If you're in the middle of battle, it doesn't matter whether you think you're called or not. The battle has found you. Somebody shows up in your house to steal your goods. 
You can't say, hey, wait a second, let me prepare myself. No, there's no, battle's on. Let the weak man say, I am a strong soldier. Verse 11, all you nations hurry, come together in that place. Lord, bring your strong soldiers. So I want to tell you, let your confession become one of strength. Let your confession become one of strength. Smith Wigglesworth. Anybody know, heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Somebody asked Smith Wigglesworth one time, how are you? How are you feeling? And he said, Wigglesworth doesn't ask himself how he feels. He tells himself how to feel. He knew he could control his feelings. You can control your feelings. How do you, how do you control your feelings? One way is to put strength in your mouth. Let the weak say, I am strong. Well, that sounds like a lie. No, it's a faith confession. It's a confession on the outside of what God has already said on the inside. Well, what if I don't believe it yet? Keep saying it. You will. You will eventually. And as I told you before, information does not create transformation. Revelation creates transformation. Right now you have a piece of information. The Bible says to say, let the weak say, I'm feeling weak. So I have information that says I should say that I'm strong. I don't feel strong. But I have information to say I should say that I'm strong. So I'm strong. I'm strong. Dad, is it Lillian B. Yeomans and the woman upstairs? Sick, on her deathbed, days maybe to live. Lillian B. Yeomans gives her scripture to read, but she tells her, I want you to say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. And the lady couldn't hardly get a a half a breath out, so it might take a long time to say it one time. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And she would say it over and over and over again until a few days later she comes running down the steps... Dr. Lillian, Dr. Lillian, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. How did that happen? Through the confession of God's word. Through the confession of God's word. Put strength scriptures in your mouth. Okay, here we go. Write them down as fast as you can. Psalm 18, 1 and 2, we read it already. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength. In whom I will trust my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Jump to verse 32, same chapter, Psalm 18, verse 32. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. That word there means an inability to produce results. In other words, I can't get this job done. I need him. Therefore, I take pleasure in the fact that I recognize that I need Jesus right now. In reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak... Then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because I'm not operating in my strength. I'm operating in his strength. Finally, real strength has come into me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 138, 3. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Hallelujah. Psalms again, 8, chapter 8, verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. I love it when some little kid who has no real idea of of the circumstances and situations going on repeats to you or repeats to me the strength that I would have said when I was strong. 
And now when I'm weak, they don't understand the situation, but they go, well, Daddy, you said da-da-da-da. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but you just don't understand. Well, that's what the Bible says. You know, they just like put it in. Yeah. You ever watch the movie For Love of the Game with uh, Kevin Costner? And he's a pitcher on the mound, and he's about to pitch the, the perfect game. It's, it's coming at the end, and it's his last game. He's about to retire. Perfect game happening. And they put a rookie up to bat. And Kevin Costner, whoever he is, in Chapel, something Chapel. Billy Chapel? Sounds right? Okay. Anyway, uh, he says, oh, great. They put a rookie in here who has no clue. His first time up the bat in the major leagues. He has no clue of the situation going on. And he's just apt to destroy it because the other guys would have respect for it. I'll just take the strikeout. We're going to give Billy Chapel the retiring uh, perfect game here on his last trip to the mound. But not this rookie. It's my first time up the bat. Babes. Out of the mouth of babes. He has ordained strength. Sometimes you ought to go ask child for advice. Psalm 18, verse 32. We read it earlier, sorry. Psalm 19, verse 14. Psalm 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 22, 19. But you, O Lord, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. 28, 7, and 8. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I help and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices and with my song, I will praise him. Verse 8, the Lord is their strength and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Praise God. Psalm 29, 11. Are you writing some of these verses down? The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Well, I don't know if I can be helped in this situation. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Psalm 54, 1. Save me, O God, by your name and vindicate me by your strength. At the very end of the screen there. Psalm 65, 6. Who established the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power. Oh, there's lots of psalms. Lots of psalms. We'll skip some. Just for time's sake, we'll go into the New Testament. Matthew 19, 26. Oh, I got to give you one more psalm. Psalm 73, 26. Just because it's a... I hate skipping any of them. My, my, my. We won't. We're only skipping four. So we'll just do them. Psalm 71, 16. 71, 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. That's a good confession in itself right there. How am I going to do this? I will go in the strength of the Lord God. When you wake up in the morning and you're about to go out through, through your day, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness of yours only. 73, 26. Psalm 73, 26. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. But I feel weak. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength. Well, I have a hard time believing. God is the strength of my heart. But I have a broken heart. God is the strength of my heart. Let the weak say I am strong. You missed that earlier in the message, didn't you? You're reemphasizing it. Let, you have to you say it. It's a say la moment. What did I say earlier? Those who make strides, who make spiritual strides, participate in Selah. They meditate, they mutter, they think about, and they speak God's word. All right. Uh, Psalm 118, 14. Psalm 118, 14. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. Four more verses. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Fresh strength day by day. 
Philippians 4.13, you could probably quote it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't remember this occasion, but I've been told I was five years old. I was in kindergarten. We were playing on the playground, and the playground was separated from a blacktop uh, basketball courts by a, by a chain-link fence. And I began to climb the fence, and the teacher said, John, you can't do that. And I said, yes, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The teacher laughed so hard. I got over the fence and didn't really get in trouble, but I learned later I'm not supposed to cross it. Not that I can't climb the fence. I'm not supposed to climb the fence. And I learned through practice, through experience, and through paddles on my backside that I can not sin. I can not sin. How? Through Christ who strengthens me. He'll put the want to on and the ability. Not just the desire, but the ability. Hallelujah. I can do all things. I can not sin. I can resist temptation. I can. Okay. 2 Timothy 1.7. We'll, we'll end with this. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of strength, of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. A strong spirit. Strong spirit. It'll help you resist temptation, resist sin, resist sickness, resist all sorts of opportunities to fail. But it will also cause you to conquer, to overcome, to rise up, to win. Strong spirit. Not just spiritually only, but the spirit of a man, not just the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's strong. He can't get any stronger than what he already is. He's the spirit of power. Amen. But you can be strengthened yes. with might in your spirit by God's spirit who lives in your inner man. Amen. So develop a strong spirit. Whatever level of strength you are presently at, you can get stronger. Keep exercising. Keep eating right. Last, last thing here. That was the last scripture. Well, we weren't ending, but last thought here. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. You never satisfy anything by feeding it. You simply increase its capacity. Some of y'all have heard that before. Thank you, Pastor Wayne. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. You never satisfy anything by feeding it. You merely increase its capacity. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. Some people feed their flesh three hot meals and two snacks plus a midnight ice cream every day of the week. And then they get one cold spiritual snack because they go to some cold dead church somewhere. But even if it was a hot meal on Sunday morning, it's not enough. Give us this day our daily bread. Father, I thank you for this company of, of champions. Your overcomers. Your overcomers here gathered in this room. The hungry. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Well, so because they're hungry, they're also full. Full to overflowing. And still searching for more. Father, I thank you that if we seek you with all our heart, we will find you. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. Thank you, God, for strength, for wisdom, for your word, and for your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you need ministry in some fashion, feel free to come down. I'll hang around down here for a few more minutes. 
Uh, if we have a number of you come down, have some of the team come and minister to you as well. Um, I'm not going to minister to you publicly, but this just came to me here. Um, so find a way to come to me tonight or, or, or call me or something. If It just depends on your the level in which you want to protect yourself. But um, I, there's someone contemplating divorce. You're contemplating divorce. And the Lord will help you. I want to help you. Is there anyone in here making decision over an employment change, job change? This is significant to you. Anybody in, in here for that? Over here, two, two hands. Lord, I pray for these two. You've revealed this. That means you have, you have answers for them. I guess the reason why you would reveal it is just to simply let them know that you're speaking. You're giving them the answers. I, I hear this in response to that, yes, and I also give them the desires of their heart. I don't know what it is that you're desiring, which, which way you, you want to go. I don't know the, the, the details. I don't need to know the details. God knows the details, and he'll give you answers and the desires of your heart. Let's see if there's anything else. Thank you for waiting for just a moment. I didn't plan this, but this is wonderful. Well, praise God. If that first thing that I mentioned, if that was, if that's you, feel free to come talk to me or, or contact me later. That's fine. If you don't want to come, whatever. That, that's going to be totally up to you. Oh, praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I know it's just past 8.30. It's all right. I think it's all right. I hope it's all right with you. Would you just, I don't know, put, put out your hands or, or something. Just, just let the Lord pour into you. Do something in a physical measure that helps your mind connect with, with what the Spirit of the Lord is doing. Just receive strength from God. Receive strength from Him. Wisdom and counsel and might. Praise you, Lord. Say this with me. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. <laughs> One more time. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Good night. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.